Hey everyone. Oh, 10 people out there already. I wasn't expecting that. How are you all going? Good to see. We've got some folks out there tuning in. I hope you're all relaxing after your exam uh, and getting some free time, getting to wind down a little bit now after all of your hard work and all of the exam um, results are in and I'll be talking to you about uh, when we release those um, uh, in today's stream. But in the meantime, uh, you should feel welcome to say hi in the chat board and uh, ask me anything that you want to ask me uh, in the in the uh, chat room. I've certainly got my own little agenda for today's um, stream, but um, you should certainly uh, feel well to ask me anything that you would like to ask me while we go along. Um, I have a few things that I wanted to talk to you about uh, today, and of course I've got a coffee. Let's see if we can get through this stream without me spilling it. Um, but with the semester coming to an end, um, and given that you'll all be going out into the wide world and um, uh, mind-brain behaviour one is uh, pretty much done and dusted, I wanted to let you know how you can stay in contact with the school, um, with myself and with the other academics in the school and indeed in touch with each other. So there are uh, a few ways that you can do this and certainly um, we're uh, engaging in one particular way right now, aren't we? Um, so uh, I, of course, have got um, some, I suppose, burgeoning social media presence. Um, it's something I've only really started tinkering with uh, this year when I've taken over coordination of Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1. Um, and I am going to incorporate it in my work in second semester in Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2, but I'm not the coordinator for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2. That will be Dr. Judy Humberstone. She'll be looking after you for Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2, and you're going to be in great hands. Of course, Simon Cropper will be back to look after you as well. Simon, of course, is the convener of all of first year. His work spans the entire uh, year, including the first and second semester. And then in summer, we run an, an intensive program for graduate diploma students. And Simon uh, oversees all of that. And um, as you know, he's got a special focus on student well-being. So no doubt he'll be speaking with you um, about um, student well-being and uh, things around that in second semester in Mind, Brain and Behaviour too. Maybe before I tell you about my intentions around social media for Mind, Brain and Behaviour too, we could talk about Mind, Brain and Behaviour too generally. Um, many students after having done the entire first year, report that Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2, the semester two subject, was more along the lines of what they thought of when they thought about um, psychology. So if you think about psychology, typically many people think about maybe counselling or clinical psychology might think about social psychology commonly and certainly both of those things are represented in the mind brain and behavior two curriculum so let's talk about the curriculum um, for mind brain and behavior two the um, semester begins with developmental psychology human development and so this is taught by uh, Dr. Humberstone. Again, Judy Humberstone is the lecturer for um, this, and she's an expert in developmental uh, psychology. And uh, she will teach you all about how we um, develop psychologically from 
um, birth and through the entire lifespan. So quite commonly people might think that developmental psychology is just about childhood and that's not necessarily the case. Sure, there might be a focus there, but it actually does consider development throughout the lifespan. Next will be about um, social psychology and we're really lucky to have Professor Yoshi Kashima um, taking that section of the course. Uh, Yoshi is um, a very experienced social psychologist and social psychology is all about um, how we um, behave and experience the world in the context of groups and social processes, how they affect us um, and um, our functioning and our behavior and our thoughts and our attitudes and all of these sorts of things. Um, and so there's a focus on the social, funnily enough. The next topic that comes is um, personality psychology. Now, there is a difference here. Whereas Yoshi will be uh, teaching you about um, social processes, personality is about individuals. It's about what um, makes individuals unique and different to each other. You know the term personality. You've heard this before. So... I'm sure you'd already have an intuitive sense about what that is going to be about. What sort of factors make up personality? Is personality a constant thing? Does it change across times, uh, across time and over situations? Um, what sorts of um, factors influence the development of personality and so forth? And um, how would we assess personality? What sort of factors make up personality? Uh, different theoretical approaches to personality. These are all the things and more that Professor Nick Haslam will present in his uh, lecture series on personality psychology and mind, brain, behavior too. Again, an expert in his field. Um, so we're really lucky to have him on board. And then lucky last is yours truly, and I will be uh, winding up the semester with a lecture series on clinical psychology. And in that particular lecture series, we will consider some very fundamental issues surrounding the diagnosis and classification of mental disorder. Uh, we'll be thinking um, about um, issues like what exactly um, psychological distress is, what well-being is, what mental health is, what mental illness is. We'll think about all of these very big fundamental questions. We'll consider some core theoretical approaches to considering these questions. And then we're going to have a look at specific types of mental disorders themselves. I've been using terms sort of sporadically throughout this semester even, like um, anxiety and depression and schizophrenia I've mentioned as well. And so we're going to look at a range of mental disorders and certainly high prevalence disorders like anxiety and depression. I call them high prevalence disorders because they happen relatively often compared to others like schizophrenia, which we would call a low prevalence disorder, which affects roughly around say a percent of the population um, and which would vary roughly um, a little bit depending on where you are. Um, so we'll be uh, considering all of those sorts of things and then um, at the end of the lecture stream we'll consider some, we'll zoom out again, we'll look at some broader issues around stigma and culture and alternative approaches to thinking about the experience of psychopathology and mental illness and psychological distress and so forth and that tail end of that lecture series is a segue as opposed to my third year unit which is the psychopathology of everyday life which builds on that content and explores um, things in more depth and of course there's more research methods you thought you were getting away without research methods didn't you no way of course there's going to be research methods and this time there's going to be more of a focus on statistics so this semester, you have had a general introduction to thinking about psychological research to 
establishing a research question and a hypothesis to devising a research study design to be able to test a hypothesis. You've thought about sampling, you've thought about variables and measurement, um, you've thought critically about um, all of these things and um, how the quality of each one of these components of a research study and then how the research study is written up and the, the quality of the argumentation and the logical um, aspects in terms of inductive and deductive reasoning, how these all can um, contribute to the, the value and the reliability and the validity of the research that you're consuming as a student and in due course that you'll be producing as a student if you go on with psychology. Next semester we build on this um, and we move beyond, now of course we also dis, uh, discussed descriptive statistics this semester, didn't we? We talked about um, statistics that describe your sample data, things like means and standard deviations. Oh, nice scarf. Yeah, it's a bit chilly in my office. Look, there's Simon, everyone. Simon's in the chat room. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Uh, it, is, it is a nice scarf, isn't it? I bought this in Florence earlier on this year, don't you know? It's cashmere. Um, but uh, uh, it's a little bit chilly in my office today. Uh, so yes, I've, uh, I've stayed rugged up. Um, so yes, we did some descriptive statistics this semester, measures of central tendency and spread and this sort of thing. Next semester, we're going to look at the types of statistics we could use to interrogate the data from a study and make some inferences about what might be happening with the population that we drew a sample from. The types of statistics we're going to use, some of you will be familiar with already, um, things like t-tests and correlations, uh, for example, are two of the uh, types of procedures that we're going to learn about, procedures that will allow us to, to um, statistically test if, for example, two groups happen to be um, different in terms of some uh, variable, or if two variables uh, happen to be associated in some way, that's certainly something we could test as well. Again, you'll get practical experience with SPSS and developing skills around this. Um, the research methods component of the course will again be taught via online modules and tutorials. Now, as soon as you enroll in Mind, Brain and Behaviour 1, and if you haven't done that already, go and do it because it's going to be awesome. As soon as you enroll and the LMS page goes live, you will be able to start working on the research methods modules. They're all going to be there. Um, in fact, they're already there and they're ready to go. The, oh, did I say Mind Brain Behaviour 1, did I? Sorry, I meant go and enroll in Mind Brain Behaviour 2. Don't enroll in Mind Brain Behaviour 1. We've done that already, haven't we? Um, I, oh God, I'm knocking stuff over. I'm all flustered. I meant go and enroll in Mind Brain and Behaviour 2 because that's going to be awesome. Not that mind brain behavior one wasn't awesome, it was pretty awesome. Um, so, the research methods modules you'll be able to start at the start of semester. And because it's one of my two areas of teaching, I'm going to be doing a live stream. Uh, project attached to the research methods modules, uh, which will not be compulsory. It will be for anybody who's interested, but attached to each research methods module, I'm going to assign an interesting reading for people who want to get on board with this. And that interesting reading will leverage and explore something from the research methods module that you've completed. This is going to be a live stream online regular journal club. We'll, I'll assign a reading, you can read it, you can think critically about the article that I've assigned, and then we'll get together in this space, um, as in cyberspace, not everyone in my office, that would be pretty cramped, and then we will have our own little virtual 
um, live streamed journal club. That's going to be to accompany the research methods component of the subject and make it um, as interesting and as applied uh, as possible. And again, that's just going to be a, a thing I'm going to do uh, to see if you guys like it, really. Of course, all of these um, vlogs and live streams that I've been doing um, have been the first time that I've done them. So in the coming days, actually, I intend to uh, send you all a link to ask you whether or not you enjoyed them, if you found them valuable, if you think they're a good idea, if I should do them again, uh, if I should do them more frequently, less frequently, what you think I should be covering now that you're experts on Mind, Brain and Behaviour One having been through it, all of that sort of stuff. Um... So, uh, Alice, how can you do some pre-learning for next semester? That's a really good question. Thanks for posting that question, Alice. So, the first thing I suppose you could do would be to um, access the general textbook or really any introductory um, psychology textbook would be fine. And you could have a read through the developmental, social, personality, and clinical psychology sections of the textbook. Um, and that would give you uh, certainly a good flavor of some of the things that we would be starting to talk about in the, in the um, second semester program. If you accessed the Graviter and Wallnau um, statistics for the behavioral science um, textbook already, um, or if you haven't, you can always um, get access to it. Uh, you know that I'm going to be now talking about t-tests and correlations, so you could even start reading about those if you wanted to, or just maybe even start by reading about inferential statistics um, in that particular textbooks. Uh, in, in, in that particular textbook. So really, I think if you did a little bit of pre-reading, Alice, in the introductory texts, that would um, certainly uh, help kick you off for second semester. Uh, hi, Kushagra. Uh, so in research methods, uh, will we be, uh, will meta psychology and research methods beyond experimental studies? Um, I will touch a little bit on meta analysis, um, but uh, I won't be teaching uh, us how to do. Um, yeah, Jethro, f feel free to jump in with any questions you have. Um, so Kushagra, uh, I won't be teaching uh, any sort of meta-analytic -anal techniques, but I certainly have got a lecture on clinical trials. And this lecture forms an intersection between my research methods content and my clinical psychology content and brings it together and really fleshes out um, uh, how um, clinical psychology is so... Um, founded on evidence, such as staunchly evidence-based uh, discipline. And we look at different types of evidence, uh, hierarchies of quality of evidence and so forth that we like to see that would underpin a new therapy, for example. Um, and um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I keep writing, I keep reading Simon's comments. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, I will talk about um, meta analyses in um, that particular lecture and do some. Yeah, you are uh, meta analyses in that section and um, talk about um, that and uh, things like Cochrane reviews as well. Um, so yeah, there'll be a little bit of talk around that, Kushagra, and, um, 
but no uh, work on meta-analysis per se in the research methods component of the course. That's a little way off yet. It's quite sort of complicated stuff. Um, and um, that's something I think you might look at in, ooh, I would like to say your fourth year, uh, potentially. I'm not sure what's going on with fourth year stats at the moment. Um, yes, Alice, so Simon does make a good point. Obviously, make sure to have some downtime during uh, the, um, the break as well. And uh, if my, I suspect, I don't know, but I sort of suspect that my PhD student, Kelton, might be out there in the, um, in the audience viewing right now, and that's something he's never quite got the hang of. Uh, Telton, Kelton tends to curl up with a big, thick textbook uh, and hibernate uh, in between semesters um, and read fun stuff like multivariate statistics. Uh, okay, you are welcome, Kishagra. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right as well. I'm terrible with pronouncing names. If we don't, okay, so Acacia asks, if we don't do mind brain behavior two next semester, but decide at the end of the year that we want to pursue a psychology major, are we able to start a level two psych subject in the first semester next year? Yes, you are. Yes, you are, because the uh, new Melbourne model, um, uh, the new Melbourne, <laughs> I just feel like I need to block out this chat feed. Um, Simon, the new um, Melbourne model gives you that flexibility. Um, so the thing, yeah, so you can. The thing is that some courses or subjects build on um, the content, the foundational content that we lay out in mind, brain, and behavior too. So, for example, take my psychopathology of everyday life, which is a third year subject. Um, we have people, um, uh, we have people enrolling in that that have never taken any psychology, and uh, I'm very mindful of that when I design the course, and so. Um, we, I try to make that subject, and we always try to make the subjects as standalone as possible, but, you know, undeniably, uh, foundational knowledge has to help, doesn't it? So, um, uh, yeah, I suppose that's something just to be mindful of, uh, that um, uh, maybe doing that, for that first year subject first um, could be useful, uh, but certainly, if you have other plans, then you should um, still feel very comfortable to consider doing some second year psychology in first semester um, next year. You're certainly able to do that. Uh, hi, Jethro. Okay, so you're interested in doing some volunteering. Great in the psych field. Uh, any, uh, yes, it is possible for undergrads. Um, so any tips or opportunities that I can tell you about? Well, the psychology field is really broad. I mean, just think about what we've done in Mind, Brain, Behaviour 1 and what I've told you is coming up in Mind, Brain and Behaviour 2. It's incredibly diverse. We're talking about everything from neuroscience, sensation and perception, learning, language, memory, developmental, social, personality, clinical psychology and research. Heaps of scope. So you could think about organizations that might tap into that in some way. Um, many people, when they volunteer, are interested in volunteering in some way that gives them a sense of what clinical psychology might be like and what counseling might be like. And one way you could do that is by looking for opportunities uh, with organizations like, for example, Lifeline. So with Lifeline, which is a telephone counselling um, service, they offer services on the phone and online. Um, you can um, uh, you can uh, do a brief training course with them, and you can, um, in a relatively short period of time. 
um, get to a point where you can be volunteering as doing some, and I'm just going to put the link to Lifeline. Oh, that's not a whole link, is it? Why don't I, why don't I paste a whole link? Let's try that again. So I'm just pasting a link to Lifeline in the chat there. Um, so you can do some telephone counselling. Now, the great thing about Lifeline is if you are interested in being a uh, clinical psychologist in the future or a neuropsychologist or a counselling psychologist or some sort of psychologist, some counselling experience with something like Lifeline will give you a good taste of what it is like to work with a broad variety of people and to work with presentations that commonly involve psychological uh, psychological distress, people that are upset, people that are experiencing anxiety or depression or some other form of um, um, ill psychological health, um, maybe um, substance, um, um, uh, maybe substance abuse and dependency, uh, a range of problematic life circumstances. These are all uh, the sorts of things that you'd be working with as a telephone or an online counsellor for Lifeline. Um, of course, there is a good support structure that's built in there to ensure that you've got good uh, clinical supervision and that you're well supported and supervised while you do that sort of work. And they don't just throw you in the deep end. You get adequate training uh, and then you get supported and eased into um, the role. But a gr really great way to, I suppose, get a feeling for whether or not counselling work um, is something that you actually might be interested in if you're sort of toying with that idea. So Lifeline's one. There's other organisations like the Mental Law, uh, now Wellways it's called. So it used to be the Mental Illness Fellowship of Victoria. There's various ways to volunteer with them. Um, the Salvation Army, uh, St Vincent de Paul, um, the types of organisations that might um, provide support uh, and maybe food for homeless people. Uh, around Melbourne, uh, for example, even working um, in that sort of volunteer role, just say you uh, were uh, distributing some food um, to people um, that are homeless in Melbourne, what you tend to see is there is a relatively high proportion of uh, people that you'd be working with that do experience some form of mental illness or other um, significant, um, you know, um, uh, impairments or difficult life circumstances and there can be some counselling involved uh, sort of in that role uh, as well. So there's a range of volunteer type opportunities and I think these things, now that this is actually a really good segue to talk about um, MUPA, the Melbourne Undergraduate Psychology Students Association, I think, is that what it's called? Uh, is that the, the right thing? Um, uh, psychology Association or Psychology Students Association. Anyway, MUPA is the association of um, undergraduate students. And uh, I was just speaking with one of the graduate diploma students uh, yesterday who is um, part of, I think, that particular organization. And there is um, quite a lot of discussion going on there about um, uh, volunteering opportunities. So um, maybe if you, oh, actually what I will do at the end of this um, stream is send out some links to these various things that I'm talking about, like Lifeline um, and to Mooper. In fact, if you have a look on Facebook, there is a search um Facebook for MUPA or for Melbourne Undergraduate Psychology Student Association, you'll find their page. Um, and um, I will post some other links to things that will help you stay connected and stay informed about these sorts of opportunities, I suppose, as well. Um, one thing I want to tell you about is certainly the uh, ways in which you can stay connected to, um, well, you know how to stay connected to me, right? So you've got my YouTube channel information now. So if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, make sure you do. 
click the little bell so you get the alerts when I'm going live. Um, and that way we can stay um, connected and you can always join in with um, uh, Ask Me Anything sessions when I don't, um, uh, even if you don't uh, study mind, brain, behavior uh, too, or whatever it is that I happen to be teaching at the time. And of course, then there is my um, Twitter as well, and I'll always be announcing when I'm going live, or um, maybe I will start to um, link in with some industry partners and see what we can do in terms of making opportunities available. And I'll probably announce that via Twitter. And on Twitter, I am at uh, Dr. Chris Groot. Um, to stay in contact with the school, now I'm by no means the only academic in the school that is on Twitter. There are lots of people in the school that are on Twitter. The best way to stay um, active with um, uh, academics in the school and what's going on in the school is, of course, to, um, well, you can follow the school Twitter, uh, which is, now let me get a link here and I'll post it in the uh, discussion board here. So the school Twitter uh, is at psychunimel. Um, and there is all sorts of uh, news and important things to uh, that come out of the at Psych uh, Uni Melb Twitter handle, and uh, I'm uh, working behind the scenes on that Twitter handle along with some colleagues um, who uh, work uh, on it as well. Um, Are there ways for undergraduate students to volunteer in research labs at the school? Yeah, that's a really interesting question, uh, Kushagra. It is something that has um, been, I suppose, um, explored by different people in different ways. There's ne certainly nothing systematic just yet. It's certainly something I'm thinking about with my stigma and mental health lab um, at the moment. Um, so maybe stay tuned to uh, my Twitter and I'll uh, be saying something about that at some point. Um, so I've given you the school's Twitter. Let me also give you the school's YouTube account because it's got some great stuff on it. It is an awesome YouTube channel. Uh, so if you are interested in interesting talks, and there have been a heap, and there's a great talk there from Simon you should go and check out from last year's, last year's? Uh, May lecture, where Simon gives this great talk on um, uh, whether or not we are slaves to sense. And of course, everybody knows that Simon is an expert in sensation and perception, um, and he talks about uh, this in a very creative way. Uh, and it's a great talk to start with. Uh, if you start on the school, I would start with that one uh, and then uh, move on from there and see what else takes your fancy. So uh, the other way that you can stay in touch with the school is via our website. So this is the main, I suppose, hub for the school. And from the website, you can link to absolutely everything. Uh, and here is the website for the school. Some of you may have been there already. Some of you may not have been there already. Um, if you haven't, go and check it out and you can link. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you can link to um, the academics, to courses, to subjects, to all sorts of resources, to our Twitter and YouTube feed. You can get to all everything school related from the school website. So um, certainly check that out. John asks, uh, where he can try magic mushrooms. He's interested in sensation and perception. I will stay clear of that. I don't know, John, I'm sorry. I'll leave that to Simon. Um, uh, where are we here? Oh, well, some surveys of political views have found that university faculty are mostly left-leaning now. Do you feel that a lack of political diversity is negatively affecting research? Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, one would have to ask why, I suppose, uh, political views tend to sort of uh, drift towards the left in, in universities. I think it's not such a simple answer. Um, certainly, 
um, I suppose psychology as a discipline could be thought of or uh, maybe as being a little bit left leaning because we'd, you know, generally focused on um, all things pro-social and and um, in terms of uh, social justice and and um, whatnot. Oh. Yes, because it cares about people. Yes, good one, Simon. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so that's a really interesting uh, idea. I don't think so. Certainly not in... Um, I suppose it depends whether you're talking about psychological research or psychological research more broadly, but certainly uh, I think the university is incredibly diverse politically, really, in terms of its academics and in terms of... Uh, the research that's going on at the university, just like any uh, any university, really, um, uh, there uh, are a broad variety of um, uh, political um, viewpoints that are represented in the, I think, across the staff cohort and across the topics of of courses and uh, research streams and whatnot across the university broadly. So, I think um, it's maybe. Um, more diverse than uh, might have been suggested in the news this week. Um, so what else did I have here on my little list of things? Um, I've talked about the Journal Club. So one of the reasons why you should stay connected to the Twitter accounts, you know, myself, the school and others, uh, and the YouTube accounts is because there's heaps of interesting stuff coming up. And certainly, you know, look at uh, the YouTube account of the school for starters, and you will quickly get a feeling for exactly um, just how fantastic some of the content that comes out in these special talks like May lectures and special public lectures um, uh, can be. There's in some really great events. I've just started planning my own event or one of the events for the school for um, Mental Health Week, which will be occurring later this week towards the end of semester two. Uh, and that will be uh, an event um, on the topic of stigma and uh, help seeking for mental health. Um, so there's all sorts of interesting stuff coming out all the time. There's talks happening all the time. Uh, I, we've all got our eyes on interesting um, psychological news and developments, and we're always sharing those sorts of things. So um, staying in touch with us and interacting with us online and certainly staying in touch with um, each other via uh, the Moopa uh, group, for example, on Facebook, and uh, I'll send out some links to, to Moopa in an email following uh, this broadcast, um, is a really great way for you to stay connected with each other, to stay connected with us, to feel like you've um, got a role here in the school and a place in the school, which you all do. You're just as important as um, the academic staff, of course, we wouldn't exist in terms of our jobs if you weren't here. So, you know, the school, the Melbourne School of Psychological Sciences, isn't something that you get to visit. It's something you get to participate and be a part of. It's a construction um, that we collaborate in creating, isn't it? The students and the staff. So, um, you know, the more you stay in contact, the richer your experience is going to be throughout your undergraduate career. And, you know, the more you expose yourself to, um, you know, who knows where that could lead. Oh, Simon says I'm breaking up. Can you all still hear me? Can anyone still hear me? I haven't just been talking to myself all this time. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Okay. I don't know how much you missed, but hopefully I didn't waffle on too long um, while it was uh, having a brown out. So...
Oh dear, good old, good old NBN. Okay, so, uh, oh, lots of questions coming in now. Um, so Jethro, uh, Freud and Jung, um, Nick Haslam will be um, delving into uh, psychodynamic stuff in second semester around personality psychology uh, a little. Um, I just had a thought. There was something I wanted to tell you. Right. So my jobs coordinator of the subject is not over for you guys yet. There are still a couple of things that I need to give you and um, they will be coming in most likely uh, a week or two. So what I'm going to be giving you are two things. One is going to be the marks report. So in the not too distant future, your results for all of your subjects will be released and you'll know how well you did uh, on the subjects. Um, now I will be providing you with a marks report which will um, tell you the precise details of the distribution of marks for mind, brain and behavior one across the entire student cohort. And um, I will tell you exactly in that uh, report how the marks were processed and whether or not there were any adjustments to the distribution of marks. The second thing that I will be doing is providing a coordinator's report for the subject to say that you've kindly all um, completed for us, the feedback that you've given us. So as you know, these subjects are always a work in progress. And so we're always keenly listening to what you've got to say in your opinions about the subjects and what you thought was good, what you thought could be expanded or what you didn't think was so great. Um, and we're always paying attention to that. And these subjects change from year to year. As you know, um, there's been numerous things that we've introduced this year for the very first time. So assignment one was one of those. Before, um, there was no assignment one and the um, you didn't have an opportunity for that um, maybe earlier feedback like you do now. And so assignment one is certainly already something that I will be tweaking for next year based on the feedback. So. My report for you will summarize the feedback. I'll let you know quantitatively how people rated the course across those 10 questions. Um, and I will also give you a summary of the feedback that came in the comments and also um, let you know uh, what we intend, I suppose, to, to do with that feedback uh, and what sort of thoughts that's primed for us in terms of making improvements um, and so forth. Um, oh, Jethro's just started reading Freud and psychoanalysis. So uh, Jethro, you, uh, you might even want to read um, the book uh, the Psychopathology of Everyday Life, which is, of course, his first seminal work in the area. Um, and that is the book um, that uh, I suppose is honoured uh, in um, my third year subject title. And that title is a bit of a tip of the hat to uh, Freud's work there. And Freud's work there in that book was all about his observations that the psychoses and neuroses, he called them, uh, that he was observing in clinical patients could also be observed in um, people that uh, didn't uh, meet criteria for any sort of uh, mental disorder, um, just an everyday um, um, unaffected, for want of a better term, people, um, just in everyday life. He could see, I suppose, subtle forms of psychoses and neuroses in everyday life. Um, and he was thinking then about psychopathology, I suppose, in a dimensional way, rather than being a categorical thing that you either have or you don't. He thought of it in 
uh, more of a continual way where you might have more or less of any type of experience. And from that particular thesis in that book, that would be the idea that we've all got more or less, um, uh, you know, a little bit of, of various things. And certainly I think it's a great way to uh, think about the experience of mental health and, and mental illness. Um, I think there's a lot of value in a dimensional or a continuum-based approach um, and uh, categorical approaches aren't, um, aren't unuseful. They can actually be clinically useful, but um, uh, they can also be problematic as well. But that's something I'll flesh out for you in uh, Mind, Brain and Behaviour too. Um, okay, so I am running out of time. Um, we've been nearly on for an hour. Um, but now you know that I've got the marks report coming for you and the uh, SES survey report coming for you. And um, you'll have them in the next couple of weeks when I get the, the uh, data back. And then you will have it, um, that report, very shortly thereafter. Okay. So I think um, if anybody's got any other questions or anything they'd like to say, now would be the time to throw it on. So I've certainly covered everything that I wanted to uh, cover for our time together. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm really interested to hear if you all like these live streams, if they've been valuable or interesting uh, for you, and um, I suppose what you think would be good moving forward with them. I'll send you out a little survey about that in the um, uh, not too distant future. But For now, doesn't look like. Let me just have a look back up through here. Have I got everything? Okay. So I think that's going to be it for me for the live streams for Mind Brain Behavior One. I uh, hope you enjoyed them and I hope you uh, got something valuable out of them uh, throughout semester. So thank you to Simon for joining us today and for uh, joining us uh, on the last live stream and also on the, um, the blog uh, earlier on in semester. Thanks also to uh, Dr. Joe Robertson uh, from the Mental Health Research Institute uh, for joining us to talk about work as a practicing um, neuropsychologist. Uh, thanks to Caitlin Gourlay, of course, for joining us and talking to us uh, about her experience um, doing her PhD in the sleep lab and also being the principal tutor for Mind, Brain and Behaviour One. And uh, I think, um, oh, of course, Meredith McCaig uh, for joining in um, and um, to Lynn Kelly. Uh, also for uh, uh, very kindly coming to appear uh, on the blog uh, when Meredith and I went on that little road trip for that particular episode. So that's it uh, from me. I'm going to sign off from the virtual space for this semester. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, take care and uh, don't forget to always uh, feel very welcome to drop me an email if you've had any questions or you'd like to uh, get in touch. All right, everyone, take care and thanks for tuning in. Bye.